This week on the Have a Geek Cast, we are going to, of course, talk about Civil War. Uh, we'll cover a little bit on the local gaming scene in Lake Havasu. And if you're into local gaming, how do you connect with local gamers that you may not already be connected to? And of course, a few of our shows are headed straight for their finales like freight trains. Uh, we're only like two or three episodes away from the finales of Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, and The Flash, so we'll kind of touch base on where everybody stands. This is the Have a Geek Cast. Welcome to this week's episode of Have a Geek Cast. Uh, Mike, sitting right here on this side of the microphone. Got Drake on the other side. Drake, how are you, man? I'm doing excellent today. Very good. Uh, what's your coffee situation this morning? <laughs> coffee is good. Mother's Days are happy. Um, everything is going well. Got it. Now, you got all your, your Mother's Day obligations out of the way this morning, or is there anything planned for later in the day? Uh, there is some lunch later in the day. It looks like we're going to probably head up to Vegas. We've got some dress shopping to do and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to be uh, the coat rack pretty much for the most of the day. <laughs> as As well you should be. That's... When, when you're a husband and it's Mother's Day, you just keep your mouth shut and do what she says. Exactly, and she, the girls do what she says, and I do know that now, at my height, I can hold a floor-length formal gown straight in the air, and it will not touch the ground. So I look very funny going through all those stores with my hands straight in the air. But <laughs> Well, no more so than any other husband or son <laughs> out on you know shopping missions on Mother's Day. All right, man, well... Um, Let's see. We're still kind of, uh, I don't want to say recovering from International Tabletop Day, but uh, but uh, that was about a week or so ago, and it went really well. I think both of us are pretty pleased with the turnout there at Hastings. Now, if, if you're a gamer in Lake Havasu City and you don't already belong to a group or have your local game, uh, you know, you and your buds that you play every week, or, you know, if you're looking for somebody to play with or at least a doorway into the gaming community online. Drake, what's the best way to go about that, man? Well, the best way locally right now is to uh, stop by Starbucks and Hastings at Saturday night. Uh, both have two little gaming groups that meet up. Uh, Curtis Wilson heads up the one at Starbucks, or sorry, Curtis Watson, mm -hmm. heads the one up at Starbucks right now. Uh, but we're also talking that there's going to be one for the midweek uh, group about Wednesday night where the adults can kind of sneak out. It's a date night. The kids are still in school. And we're going to be breaking out more of the co-op, cooperative games, and that'll be happening at Hastings on Wednesday. Uh, other than that, one of the easiest ways is there's a few board gaming groups online through Facebook. Uh, one I can think about is called Lake Havasu Board Gaming. And just send a request. The admins will let you in. It's the easiest way to find something going on. But also it doesn't hurt that if you've got time to play to post on there hey i've got some downtime right now i'm going to go to the place and you'll be surprised how many people are meeting up now it's really started to grow exponentially with what we've done that's uh, super cool and and of course there's uh, our good buddies over at geek and sundry he says as though he knows people personally <laughs> over there but um uh, if you follow uh, will wheaton's blog uh the latest season of tabletop is being filmed right now and he's blogging on a daily basis on uh, on everything that's going on there so if you're not already watching the geek and sundry shows which by the way uh, not only about tabletop gaming but about console gaming and pc gaming uh just gaming in general geekery over there at geek and sundry um will wheaton's tabletop show is pretty great uh, if you haven't seen a single episode of it, just go back to season one, episode one, and just start binge watching from there. Um, that was kind of my entry into uh, into tabletop gaming. Uh, I was kind of a, a dilettante, so to speak. Uh, but as a fan of Will Wheaton, once he got that up and running, of course I needed to check it out. And that's where I first learned about Settlers of Catan and mm -hmm. you know all those classic... Uh, board games and the difference between uh, American board gaming and European board gaming. And there is a difference, you know, in those yes, styles of games and the super geeky games versus family style games. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and uh, Drake, you'd recommend tabletop too, wouldn't you? I'd recommend tabletops. And also if you have a game that you don't quite know 
how to play it, even though Tabletop's good. I'm not Tabletop. Even though Will Wheaton's Tabletop is good, and he covers so many of them. Uh, if you want to look on YouTube to the channel Watch It Played with Rodney, as well as Board Game Corner with Mark Streed, uh, both of them do excellent um, playthroughs and go over the rules and take the time. It takes about four or five episodes, but they explain all of it inside and out. So I'd suggest if you've got something and you're not sure about the rules, I've done it. I've run in here and occasionally watched a quick 10-minute video, got all my answers and had it running. So you know, even if you're trying it on your own and, you do, you know, and you've got a new one, look online, try the two I suggested. They're great instructionals on how to play them. Very good. All right, moving on to the big-ass Marvel elephant in the room, <laughs> Captain America Civil War. Uh, Drake, you saw it? I've seen it twice. Good man. <laughs> it, it, the first one was with my wife when it opened up. Second one was with my mother and daughters the day after. Nice. It's such a good movie. Marvel's just hitting it out of the park. I, I uh, Would you use the phrase, they can do no wrong? Uh, on this one, yes, I would. This one, I would looked at the others, and you know the first two coming in before this, Age of Ultron and Ant Man, did get a head nod and got people excited about it, but this one really laid it all on the table. Um, Civil War for me, which for those who are the purists, no, it was not exactly like the comic book, and it might be one that a purist would say, well, all they had was the characters; everything else was just stolen from there. Um, you know, I tell you, we had, I guess you would say we had some, not fatalities, but we had some definite changings. Um, perfect example would being what happened with Rhodes, you know? Sure. And during the big battle where Vision gets a little bit distracted worrying about Wanda because he's starting to feel for her, which was something straight out of the comic books, and they call for him to do the shot with his beam, he shoots Falcon Ducks. It hits Rhodes. Rhodes comes crashing down to the earth before the others can get to him. And, you know, the the partial paralysis afterwards. And I think that was the thing that really opened up a lot of things that going into this phase three and phase four, because they've been sitting there and saying, hey, some people might not be returning after so many movies or they might be hanging it up. This one kind of showed you that we're going to get really close to killing off a character to let you know that not everybody's safe. And that's what I think was the biggest reveal um, going into Phase 3, now into Phase 4, is that even though Infinity War is saying, hey, we're going to have anywhere from, I've read, from 56 to 96 heroes, we're not going to guarantee who's going to be there or who's going to come out afterwards. Yeah, and with a movie with such epic sweep... Uh, that this film had, man, the character moments, uh, just the the developing relationship between Wanda and Vision. And how about Peter Parker and Tony Stark? That was, for me, one of the most fun scenes in the movie. The interaction in his bedroom with Aunt May. Um, it wasn't even the interaction with Aunt May before. And I have to agree with the meme that's out right now where they show <coughs> the two wonderful actresses that did Aunt May before, but then, of course, Marissa Tomei being the new version of it, going, here's Fox's version, here's Marvel's version, which was a cute little jest at it. Um, just his interaction with them was wonderful. And the fact that in that room, we covered enough... And we didn't really cover backstory for Peter Parker, but there was just enough interaction between the two of them that says, okay, we can run with Spider-Man from here. You know, he gives you know peter pretty much says with great power comes with well, great power comes great responsibility without really saying it but i mean we've seen how many reboots of spider-man we know this we understand this the fact that he says you know i've only been doing this for six months totally reboots okay we're you know you know no supervillains, nothing out that that you know except for really the common criminal or the you know protecting the little guy he's done so far and it opens up the door for homecoming that really just says, okay, we can hit the ground running because Tony Stark's made your suit. You believe in protecting the little guy. And something obviously happened that made you feel that with 
you know, great power comes great responsibility. Boom, we're off and running. We don't need another reboot of, okay, I got bit, this happened, which you know they'll reference, but a wonderful job between the two of them interacting, and it just, it, it made me like, it was a perfect, a perfect choice for an actor for Spider-Man, and out of all the ones, because I did like Toby, I did like uh, Andrew, but this kid, I tell you, he was the one that made me buy into Spider-Man the most. He was the comic book Spider-Man I'm used to. Well, they needed to go younger. They needed go needed to go back to teenage Peter Parker, um, and they did, and they nailed that. You know, it's another case of Marvel just getting the casting right. Um, mm-hmm. And like well, and the writing right, too, because you have Iron Man in the middle of the big battle. Look at Spider-Man and go, OK, OK, we don't need conversation here. You have Falcon pretty much tell him to shut up in the middle of the battle. And that's always been a thing that they've always said is kind of another trait that Spider-Man's always had is that he constantly has the quick quirks. He won't shut up. He talks through the whole battle because he's a kid, of course. Yeah. And that's what kids do when they get nervous. And they played off that. The other ones didn't. The other ones were, you know, climactic. You know, punch grab, and it was nice. It added that chuckle that a very serious movie needed. Well, that's just it. I mean, given the ramifications of different character interactions, especially the big reveal towards the end, which we're not going to talk about. Uh, it's too soon. I don't want to spoil that here in the podcast. Um, right. But the thing that uh, the thing between uh, uh, Tony and Cap. Um, yeah, that needs to remain unspoiled here and now. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. But um, given the gravity of a lot of what happens in this movie, little moments where Cap goes, kid, where are you from? Well, Queens. Oh, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's if... If you're in New York, that kind of a, you know, if you're from New York, that kind of shout out and, and you know, the fact that they're half a world away from New York and still have that moment, mm-hmm. you know, how do you not love that? Well, and that's the thing I liked about it too, because it was a head not even back to his original movie, like Cap's original movie, where, you know, he was taking a licking and still kept getting up. And Cap recognized that. And it was confirmed by finding out, oh, this is another kid from New York. No wonder he won't lay down. Yeah. No wonder he won't stop. You know, and and the it, it just goes on and on and on. So if by chance you haven't made it into the theater to see Civil War, you need to go and do it. If you're any kind of a Marvel slash comic book fan at all, if you liked any of the movies, you need to go. Um, if you if you're just a Robert Downey Jr. fan, man, yeah, to watch the acting chops he brings to this one, I mean, I I've got to tip my head. I've seen him do all of his stuff, and this was the one that I went, wow, he's hit every range in this movie. You could this is one, and I said, if you are an RDJ fan, you watch this one and you just walk out going. Thank you for the roller coaster. That was amazing. Yeah. I, I'll freely admit, man, there was a moment with uh, uh, Robert Downey's Tony Stark. I choked up a little bit. And, mm-hmm. you know, that in and, and this was uh, OK. Can't can't talk we can't about reveal it. it. We can't yeah. reveal it. But yeah. um, next week, we'll get into this yeah. a little more. So if you've seen it, go see it again. If you haven't seen it yet. Uh, go see it before next week's episode because we're going to get all spoilery up here in this thing. All right, moving along to our TV shows, uh, the three of our uh, three of our shows. Uh, we're talking uh, Arrow, we're talking Legends of Tomorrow, and we're talking Flash. Um, heading towards their finales, lots of stuff going on. Let's uh, we'll hit Arrow first. So, at this point in the game, I'm trying to remember what we've already talked about on the on the podcast. Uh, to recap, at this point in the game, we know who's been underneath the uh, the uh, the slab there in the cemetery since the first episode of this season. We know who that is now, and it's Laurel. And uh, mm-hmm. this latest episode uh, just kicked my butt. Um, I don't know, man. What did you think? One thing I liked about this last one, um, it was a heart wrencher, 
But what I the thing I liked was some of the subtlety of the character progression that they're giving even to DC characters um, that aren't on the screen. Uh, well, the first the first head nod I had because it, it was it was a heavy episode. I won't deny yeah, it. A lot going on. But the one thing that I liked that I caught subtly was, of course, he's dealing with Damian Dark. They're talking about the magic, and he goes, "Well, Constantine." you know, gave me the name of somebody, you know, to help me out. And they looked and said, Constantine's back? Yeah, yeah, he's back. He's done with what he's doing. Because a few episodes ago, it was, well, what about Constantine? Well, he's in hell dealing with something. No, literally, he is in hell. And I'm sitting there going, how awesome that they're still state, they're still following a story arc for a character they're not even writing for. That's not even on the screen. And I'm going, no, cool, yes, you know? Oh, sure. And, and it gives... Yeah. It gives Ollie uh, a life that's not on the lens, you know? Yes. Um, the fact that he's he's got this friend in Constantine, and they're close enough to stay in touch, even though, you know, Constantine could probably use Ollie's help with whatever he's in the middle of right now, and Ollie can't be there because of what he's dealing with with Dark. And obviously, because it's Dark, Ollie could use Constantine, but Constantine can't be there because he's up to his neck in something serious somewhere else in the DC TV universe that we may mm -hmm. never find out about, you know, because Constantine doesn't have a TV show anymore. So the fact that that's going on behind the scenes and it's it, it has real ramifications, even though we don't get to see what it is, just makes Ollie that little bit deeper a character to me anyway. Um well, and what I like is it makes the DC TV universe that much deeper as well. Like you said, it's not just what's on the lens. It's not just what's on Legends, Flash, and Arrow. There's a whole universe, and it is progressing with or without these characters that have, have or have not their TV shows anymore. Yeah. Um, the one thing I, I, I didn't... I can't say that I didn't like it. That's not what I'm trying to say. I wish they'd been able to go into more depth, but they weren't. It needed to happen quickly. But Ollie's quote unquote training session to fight Dark's magic. Um, yeah, I think it went the way it had to go, but I wanted more. You know, I wanted them yes. to, to get it, but that would have taken episodes that we don't have. Right. So for him to, to get the one quick 15 minutes with Constantine's friend, uh, who then goes, well, yeah, you're, it's not going to work. You know, we're wasting our time. I'm moving on. Um, I, I guess you could, if you needed to justify it in your head, you could say, okay, she's given him everything he needs. And now she's kind of throwing it back into his face as a challenge as that extra little bit of motivation you know, the, the standard trope of, okay, the mentor figure doesn't think I'm up to it, so now I have to prove myself. Um, right. Because later on in the episode, spoiler here in 3, 2, 1, Ollie was able to, to use that training against Dark. You know, if you even want to call it training. You know, it was more just a hint of, of an asset that he has that he didn't know he had before. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that's going to be anything more later in the season. I don't know if they're going to make anything more of what happened. Um, what do you think? Uh, I think when she dropped the bombshell that Constantine's tattoo he gave you uh, does more than you know. Um, I think that's what we'll tap into. He'll tap into that somehow. That'll be how he defeats Stark. But you're right. It's just a matter of we don't have the time in episodes unless we want to dedicate a whole season five to battling Dark. Um, to actually take this out. We've only got, what, three episodes left before we're hitting the biggie? Yeah. Yeah. So, and how so. about uh, how about Thea's Jim Carrey moment? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. Kind of, I'm stretching the uh, metaphor the a little bit. But, thing. but when she ran into the wall, um, it, it's, we're not going to spoil this just in case you haven't seen the episode yet. But uh, um, it's pretty obvious early on that when Thea and her boyfriend go off for their little bit of a weekend, that right out of the gate, you know, as soon as she gets out of bed and goes downstairs, something's hinky 
And I, I was starting to get a little irritated because she's a sharper character than this. Um, she should have twigged to something going wrong long before she actually did. But it's TV. You forgive, you know. Well, so, they did say that he did drug her. So, yeah, you know, we can brush that off it's those effects. But but when uh, when she finally realizes the, the truth of the situation um, and they couldn't have made it more obvious. I mean, when yeah. in the previously on Arrow. <laughs> You know, that it was just it had nothing to do with anything but setting up for the point where he pours out the pill bottle. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, thank God we've got those previously because I forgot about the the little yellow pills. I totally <laughs> spaced those. So. Uh, OK, so that's where we stand on Arrow. Uh, nothing major happened beyond setting up some stuff for the finale. But there were some pretty great character moments that you ought to check out if you haven't seen the episode. Moving on to Legends, uh, and we talked about this uh, setting up for the show. There's a moment in Legends that calls forward to uh, Captain America Civil War uh, about a week ahead of the game. Um, two characters do similar things, but Ray Palmer does it first. That's right. <laughs> so, And it's something he's never done in the comics. To the best no, you're of, right. Yeah, true. to the best of my knowledge... Uh, I'd, I'd be willing to bet a small amount of cash on this. Um, the move that Ray pulls in this episode of Legends of Tomorrow is one that the Adam never, ever did in the comics. And my DC fanboy, my my uh, my Simpsons comic book guy, you know, who uh -huh. I'm talking about is kind of going, no, if he didn't do it in the comics, he can't do it on the TV show. I had that moment. But you get over it because the, the whole scene was kind of awesome. But we'll come to that in a second or two. Uh, as the episode opens, Savage has been captured. He's on the ship and they're heading for Vanishing Point. Um, I, I was not a fan of this episode. It was a lot of setup. Uh, Ray does... You know what? I just realized I've got uh, the last two episodes confused. The uh, Ray getting big moment was in the previous episode, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Well, we didn't talk about it, though. That's true. We kind of skipped over that episode. But bottom line is the episode where Ray gets big instead of small is where they capture Savage at the end. Um, yes. Kendra, there's a moment where Kendra has to decide to kill Savage or leave him alive for reasons we don't need to go into. So she decides to not kill him, so they have to capture him and take him onto the ship. Now, we find out early in this episode that Savage has been manipulating time, which Rip is like, aha, now this will justify everything that I've done, and I can take Savage to the council, and they'll have to punish him, and I can retain my Time Master you know, status, and everything's going to be great. Um, except that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, the, it didn't. And, 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 and this, my thing, and this is, I, I, I've been, I'm enjoying legends tomorrow. I'll say that, but I definitely got irritated with this swerve. Give me a swerve. Give me something, you know, to throw me off. But actually this swerve irritated me. Mm -hmm. It kind of left me. And it all started with Kendra, like you said, and trying to make that decision. I'm sitting there going, just do it. It's, you know, I'm sitting there thinking to myself going, you are time travelers. Get rid of them. You can go back, do you say, I, 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 I had trouble buying into the, oh my God, we're worried about Carter's mind when I'm going, every time you guys regenerate, you have to remember who you are. Um, so, you know, it, it, to me, it was almost them trying too hard to to give this tension because uh, I, I really I like the way Snark, uh, you know, how he commented about it. You know, that's what we've been here for this whole time. Why was there a question about it now? Yeah. And I kind of sat there as a fan going, thank you for saying what I'm thinking. You know, sure. enough's enough. You know, kill them even more so. Person. The thing that I and and I can I can accept stuff as 
TV drama. You know, I'm pretty forgiving that way. Um, character inconsistencies, personality switches, you know, it, things not being as they should based on what they were two episodes ago. I grew up watching that kind of stuff, so I'm okay with it. The thing that irritated me the most about this episode, the final moments completely negated anything that could have possibly happened during the other moments of the episode. The way that episode ended, and we'll get into that next week, meant that nothing that was that did happen, nothing that was going to happen, uh, none of it, short of killing Savage, made any difference moving forward. Do you know what I mean? Yep. I mean you have to be exactly. careful. Don't want to don't want to spill that, but what happens once Rip shows Savage to the uh the time council and you know Savage has been manipulating time and their response meant that nothing that went before meant anything. And that mm -hmm. I got a little irritated. Doesn't mean I love the show any less. Just means that you they've they've got a high bar to get over leading into the, the final episode. So we'll cover that when the time comes. Moving on to The Flash. Love that freight train, man. That thing is barreling to a close. That um, ah, There isn't anything I hate about what's going on in The Flash right now. And that kind of surprises me because I thought I was kind of gonna. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, totally. totally. And the very end of the episode which is another thing. I, I know we're kind of being careful of spoilers when we're not usually, but when you get close to the finale, you don't want to ruin stuff for folks. So the, the, this, this, this particular episode and the way it ended calls back to deep, deep comic book storyline stuff. And mm -hmm. as, as a reader of comic books for the last 40 years, I cannot help but love it to death. So uh, what were your thoughts? My thought, I, this was the episode that I've been waiting for, but when it leads up to what's going to happen in the next episode, that's what got me. Cause this one, this one ended how I did not predict it. Like I said, how I always love watching the flash and I always guess what's going to happen. And I'm always wrong. This was one where I thought I saw it coming. I thought, we were going to see a head of Speedster versus Speedster there at the end. And then they throw you the loop. It was so good that I went to the CWTV.com so I could see the trailer for next week already. It was That's how much it hooked me. Yeah, I'm with you on that, man. And, and really, we don't need to go any further into it than this. Uh, things went as they needed to go. Um, and because you can see things developing in a certain direction... And they go that way until the twist. That's not that's not a bad thing. It just makes the twist that much more entertaining. So, um, well, it, and it's it, it day to be a punny, but yeah, things go south real fast. <laughs> yes, they do. Now, something I've been wondering about. I I kind of see that coming now, um, given what happened at the end, Jesse and Wally. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So we know now how we don't know that it's going to happen because something has happened. TV show. You know what I mean? Yep. They don't. Those characters don't necessarily have to be the same characters that we know and love from the comics. And uh, the character of Jesse has actually been around for at least three decades in one form or another. Um, Wally. Major, major changes to that character over the last five years. And the TV show version of the character is more similar to the newer comic version of the character than the classic Wally West that we know and love from reading comics for years and years and years. So all that means is all bets are off. And because we see something maybe occurring, it's interesting to me that the writers are not it's not that they're not committing to those changes. It's that they're setting up for the changes, but there's no guarantee they're going to pay off in the way that we expect. So, and all that means is I'm looking more and more and more towards these last three episodes to be amazing. And then on top of everything, the next episode is the Kevin Smith directed episode. Yes, that that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing that I like though, also 
in the way what's happened with the flash and all that is the flash actually gave us exactly what we've been asking for but did it in such a way that we're left going did we really want this did did i really do is you know because now they're doing this to us mm-hmm. you know that's what i've always liked about the flash's writing is you can sit there and go i want this to happen and then you go ow that hurt you know <laughs> sure. and it goes back to the beginning all of us wanted eddie out of the picture so we kill him i mean that was that that was straight to the bone that was whoa we wanted it but we didn't want that right. um and that's what i like about the flash's writing they'll give you what you want but you better be ready to take it exactly so listen in for the next few podcasts because we're gonna have to follow the the shows episode by episode from this point on there's gonna be a lot happening uh pretty much on all three of our shows so that's gonna do it for this week man uh anything i miss you want to get in before we're done no i've got girls uh dressed and ready to go so i'm being kidnapped off to vegas uh well enjoy yourself up there man and uh, as always if you want to get in touch with the podcast facebook is the way to do it it's our primary point of entry um find us and like us on facebook we're at uh, facebook.com slash have a geek dash cast once you like us we'll start showing up on your timeline you can uh You can give us messages. Let us know what you want us to cover. We cover the stuff that we love, but we want to cover the stuff you love, too. Uh, Even if what you love is what we love, which is why you're listening. (laughs) So that's going to do it. You have a geek week. Geek week.